Hey guys, I am here with Apollo, the giant schnauzer puppy. Today we're going to give him a clippered haircut, a breed profile trim, and they want his beard just a little on the short side. So let's get busy. So here I have the Andis rakes. I'm going to start with the regular rake and we're going to go over his coat before we do any clipper work. If any clipper work's actually needed when I'm done with this. You always want to use this tool in the direction that the hair grows. This is Apollo's very first haircut. He is 12 weeks old. I normally wait till a puppy is 16 weeks old before I take him, but this puppy, because he is so large, he's 35 pounds at 12 weeks, I figured for his ages and stages of learning that it is best to go ahead and get him started right away. He's the only dog in the salon. Everything has been disinfected for him. Of course, we disinfect everything anyway. So, basically what this is doing is getting out the loose undercoat. And as long as you um, use these techniques of removing the undercoat, you can do a clippered trim on these dogs as long as they're not going to be shown. If they are going to be shown, they have to be hand stripped. So in my salon, I call breed profile, a trim that simulates a show trim. And I call breed standard, a trim that is done to breed standard, meaning the dog could be shown in the haircut that you give them at the dog shows. He's a very good puppy. Once I get finished with the wider tooth rake, I'm going to go over it with the finer tooth rake. switching tools. He's got a lovely coat. Let's see if I can get you guys in a better position. Good boy, yes. Yes, you good baby. Okay, 
And then I'm going to use a pumice stone. Run this over the coat. It's going to take out some of this longer, coarser hair. his ears with the tin blade. It's all new for him. Not sure how he's going to handle it. Ooh. What's it? What are you doing? Huh? Oh my goodness. What is it? Thing? So I'm using the back of the clipper, rubbing along his face. It's all new. Start with the lower ear. Good boy. Good boy, He's just fine. What is that thing? Good puppy. Grow into his ears. So, when I let you guys watch me groom, I'm not so worried about being in a position where I show you everything constantly. I'm more worried about the dog and the position I need to be in to get my job done because I'm just letting you watch as I work and giving you commentary about what I'm doing. My goal is not to give you lessons, but to give you tips and tricks as I go. So I'm noticing his ears, the hair is very, very thin on the inside of the ear leather and a wee bit flaky. So we need to be careful um, not to go too close on those ears. Sometimes I will edge them out, especially if they're cropped with a 40 blade. These I will not, especially since this is first grown. because I don't want to cause any irritation or head shaking. Today's groom's all about getting him used to the whole situation. And as long as a puppy can handle it, I take them through the whole groom because they're gonna have to learn the whole groom. And I find the best way to teach them that is to do it. The only time I don't is if they're just emotionally unstable. So now I'm going to take a seven blade. Actually, I think I'm going to go with a six. Since he's got that thinness on the inside of his ears, he may have some thinness at his cowlick points and I don't want to go too close. He's, um, Gonna get a shorter beard because he's getting everything wet around the house. Okay. Mm, it's okay. Mm, it's okay. Good puppy. Good puppy. These things are hard for puppies to learn. And it's okay. And it's okay. So what I'm going to 
gonna do is plug his ears. That'll help with the noise. Good boy, Apollo. Put a nice big cotton pad in there. There we go. Come here, Bubba. The giant schnauzers are big working dogs. Um, they are not coddly babies. So I'm only petting him with my fingers with this. Just getting him used to the idea of this coming at his head. So what I'm going to do is pet, 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 swipe, pet, 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 swipe. Okay. Pet, 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 swipe. Flip the ear up. Pet, 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 swipe. Good boy. You notice I'm not hanging on to his muzzle. He, you know, has his puppy teeth in there. He's not really at a teething age, but a nice light. So my hand's cupped. My thumb's bracing his underside here. No force, no holding on to. Just enough to balance him. Good boy. Just want a nice light finger control with him. Now I'm going to switch to Hmm, a five blade. I'm going to go against the grain on the head to outline the eyebrows. Pet. I'm using my finger. Pet, 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 swipe. Pet, pet, swipe. Pet, swipe. And then I go straight into swiping with the clippers if they're handling the area okay. So you want to be real careful as you go to carve in around the eyebrows that they're not going to yank their head back. So be ready for any sudden movement. I'm going to hold the ear out of the way. This is a tender area, so we're going to go, don't eat the hair. Don't eat the hair. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Stay in the camera range, dude. Alright, pet, 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 swipe. Put that down in there a little better. Good boy. So we're going to arc up around the eyebrows. Never do this with a tin on a black schnauzer because you'll bold it out and they will look awful. Here went your cottons. All right. That's good enough for now, I think. So I get most of it done with the five against the grain, come in between the eyebrows. To do them between the eyebrows, I've got my clippers on an angle, not straight and flat, but just tipped up. Good boy. So I think I'm going to do the back with a three blade. For now, we'll see how it looks when I'm done. Let's see.
you're fine. Good boy. Oh, he's a kissy puppy. You're fine. I'm going to unhook both sides of the harness, slide it up between his ears. This is a 35 pound dog and the groomer's harness fits him just fine with plenty of excess room. All right, now we're switching to a seven blade. We're going to use a seven blade to tighten up the shoulders, the throat, and give some arch to the neck, and go down the back sides of the back legs. Good boy. Keeping the longer hair on the top of the tail, taking it shorter on the sides. Keeping the crest of the neck longer with the three blade. Coming right about to the break in the ear here, down towards the shoulder. Take it a little shorter in those areas. Coming down alongside the chest. Coming back in here to show his shoulder angles, but keeping hair on his chest for a nice full giant schnauzer strength. So my miniature schnauzers, I flatten out on the chest. And my giant schnauzers, I keep some chest hair. It's going to be blended, of course, but you want them to look like they've got a nice, powerful chest. I'm going to define his eyebrows a bit more. Good 
going. You're fine, they're not gonna hurt you. It's okay. See, you're fine. One of the reasons why I like to do work before and after the bath is it splits up the work. So he's really not liking the feeling of the scissors by his face. And so um, doing some before the bath and some after the bath is gonna give him the opportunity to relax in between sections of the work. Also, I'm not worrying about perfection at this age. I am worrying about training. Um, just kind of setting in the pattern as far as getting a nice lean head, nice long eyebrows, and so on and so forth. That's going to come with time. This is an introductory groom. Introductory grooms mean different things for different puppies. Dogs who are going to require a lot of table time and a lot of work. I throw them straight into it and let's get busy, you know. You gotta learn the whole thing, buddy. Yes, you gotta learn the whole thing, buddy. Judging by his size right now, I would say he's going to be a minimum of 80 pounds grown. I have grown some amazing giant schnauzers in my career. Westminster winners, AKC National Championship winners, award of merits at their breed specialty and uh, police dogs, drug dogs. I have a great respect and a great love for this breed. Can't read your cotton again. You lost a cotton again. Another one in for the bath. I'm not going to use an ear wash in his ears today. That would be a mistake due to his sensitivity. So I'll just keep the ears plugged to keep water out of them during the bath. It's okay. Good boy. You're fine. Get a grip. You're fine. Get a grip. Get a grip, Apollo. Get a grip, Apollo. Yes. This one.
power. Let's do this. Great dog this is going to be. I recommend getting a dog like this into puppy classes immediately as soon as the dog training club will have them. Puppy star classes. Here in Tampa we have the dog training club of Tampa. You can enroll them online for puppy star. I highly recommend that and then going into basic obedience and continuing on with them as far as you are willing to take them because these dogs are brilliant. to condition him. baby. I'm a good baby.
Wait to see him grow up. Yeah, you can't.
Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Do this one. Good boy. Good puppy. Good puppy. Good puppy. go over the sides of the neck and the back of the legs with my seven blade. Unhook both sides of the harness, lift it up right behind the ears, and then I can hold it like a leash underneath. Coming from about the break in the ear, down over the big shoulder muscle, and exposing this shoulder here, dipping a little bit here to expose the angle of the shoulder, skimming off as we get down towards the leg. Coming down the back of the leg here to help accentuate his angulation. Getting nice and tight on the back end. Get this harness back on. Again, clipping off the sides of the tail, but not the top. All right. Sweeping down into the back legs, down towards the hot joint. Clearing out this area here. Sorry, you can't see, but I gotta focus on the puppy. We have a few giant schnauzers coming, so I'll be able to give more detailed instructions as he grows and with Eloise that's coming in, the giant schnauzer. Um, now that word will get out that I am doing giants again and wheat and terriers and curry blues, that my client list is going to grow exponentially. All right. Got the three blade on. Going back over the pattern. I graduate the lengths of the blades I use on clipper pet trims so that I can get a nice tight hand stroke look on a clipper dog. You're fine. You're absolutely fine. Put out that question. Put you over there.
when coming down along the rib cage, you want to curve under the rib cage and skim off. All the lines need to be blended, no sharp lines anywhere. All of his undercoat is out. There's nothing left to card or rake out at all. It's all gone. The Andis rakes did a beautiful job on that. Now I'm going to take my five blade. I'm going to come against the grain up the front of the throat. and come against the grain up the cheeks and blend in the beard. One of the big issues that the pet parent's having is his beard getting so wet. So they really wanted a shorter beard. One way to alleviate that, and I'm gonna try this first, is I'm going to bring the under jaw up so that there's much less fullness in here and he can still have his beard and drink his water too. Don't know if he's gonna let me do this today, but let's try. This way there's less to get wet. And one trick with your dogs, uh, if they're bearded dogs, to keep them from getting quite so wet is to use a bucket instead of a dish. The bucket will hold the beard back as they lap up the water. And what I mean is like a stainless steel dog watering bucket. Don't worry about it holding excessive amounts. You got to change that water every day anyway. <laughs> so, you know. All right. So, since I used a three blade on the body, right here in front of the tail, you see this rise? That's quite normal. Um, I, that's one of the reasons why I like using graduating lengths on my blades. So right over this rise here, I'm going to use my five blade. Just on the top line. Not going into the tail, staying away from the tail. I'm going to take a look at it. It's looking better. but it's still got a bit of a rise. So now I'm gonna go with the seven blade. And right where I still have a bit of a rise, I'm gonna go with my seven, right here. And what I wanna do is create a beautiful outline for him so that he's got a nice flat back. And so the graduating lengths of the blades are giving him an arch to his neck, a chest, and a flat back. Good boy. And this teaching him to stack on the table. As he grows, I'm gonna need him to do this so that I can do a nice groom on him. So this is just part of the training. Just a little bit here and there. Yes. Just a little bit here and there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love you. Yuck. Yeah. Thank you, 
germs. Okay, we're gonna need to go back over the ears and get them tightened up. I'm not going any closer than a 10. If you're uncomfortable shaving ears, be sure to watch my How to Trim Ears Safely video. I will link it at the end of this one. Good boy. You can lay down if you want to. Okay. A lot of dogs like to lay down when they're uncomfortable with you doing something. And it's a good idea to let them. It doesn't hurt a thing. So many times I see groomers trying to make a dog stand. It's not necessary. My favorite thing is to teach them both. To teach them to lie down when they can and then teaching them to stand when it's needed. If you have a dog fighting with you on something like its ears and they're trying to lay down and they're dropping their head and they're like, <laughs> you know, they're just saying, hey, you know, I'm kind of nervous about this. Can you let me lay down so I can be more comfortable and I'll relax for you? I really want this dog. I really, really want this boy. I love him so much already. My eyes are tearing up. I swear I adore him. You're going to be my client forever, right? You're never allowed to go anywhere else for any reason, you hear? If you don't think groomers get attached to dogs, you are wrong. And sometimes it's love at first sight. And sometimes my clients are so happy to come see me and I'm so happy to see them. And it's very obvious to the pet parents that you know, it's more than just a haircut. Trust me. It's okay. I got you. So when doing eyebrows, it's a good idea to mist them. I like to use just a light coat conditioner for the most part. That's going to hold them down and then shape so they don't push off of the scissor as you go to trim. His eyebrows are short right now because he's a baby. Again, he's 12 weeks old, but as he grows, I like for my giant schnauzer eyebrows to touch the nose. They get very, very long. <clears throat> and basically, I never trim the top of the nose. Um, as giants get bigger, they should have two level planes, one on top of the nose and one on top of the head. You want to be sure that's accentuated. If you have any cowlicks or hair on top of the nose or anything that's detracting from that, you can take that, but very judiciously. And 
And while I do like my eyebrows to come all the way down and touch the nose, I don't like them to inhibit their vision at all. I do the same with Scottish Terriers and standard size schnauzers. I'm hoping to get some standard schnauzer clients as well. It's another breed I love. I have owned two of them. It's okay, don't back up, don't back up, don't back up. Good boy, yes. Good puppy. Good puppy. Let's make sure this cotton's out of your ears. Yep, it's all gone. He's all gone. So, did I do the pads of your feet? Not really. Using a 40 blade. Beatsies. Tomorrow's video will be a baby doodle. She's adorable. All right, I'm gonna want him standing for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten him up a bit. So when I said good, he put his feet four square and stopped the leaning. I am very specific with my grazes and I time them for things that I want. Sometimes I'll just love on them, but you know, for the most part, they're listening constantly and I am using that to my advantage. I see you. Yes. All right. <laughs> if you guys over here. This one. So the underline should not drop past the elbow. So I'm starting right about the last rib. And carrying this to the elbow. Good boy. And we're going to do this side. I'm going to start at the elbow and go to the last rib. 
I work in opposites on opposite sides of the dog going one direction one side the other direction on the other side just because it's more comfortable for me he's a baby he's starting to lose patience I'm about to call it done just so we don't push him past his threshold of what he can handle on any given day. While I do like to push them through and get the whole job done, I don't want to stress them. It is indeed a balancing act. These legs get blended right into that shoulder that was trimmed with a seven. Again, we're trying to make this beard as thin as possible. So I'm gonna use my fusion curvy shears so I can angle it downward. I'm just gonna come sweeping forward and try to just keep the front of the beard longer and keep his correct outline. Good boy. I know it, I know it, I know it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it's a rough life. It's a rough life being a giant schnauzer. Hmm. Yeah. out his ears. Make sure they look nice and neat. Good boy. I want to blend these lines from the three blade to the seven blade using blending shears. Again, everything needs to be blended nicely. guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next upload. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye!